Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're diving into this exciting new Swift UI feature called Container Relative Frame. So in this video, we're gonna go over what it is and what it helps us do better in Swift UI. So let's just hop right in. Why do we care about this? Well, it's mainly for dynamic and relative sizing, guys. So this feature or this modifier is going to help us dynamically size views in a more concise and elegant way. And it's gonna help us write cleaner code so we can move away from things like geometry reader and hacky implementations for dynamic or relative sizing. So in SwiftUI or app development in general, guys, relative sizing of views is very important. Like if you have an app that works on both iPhone and iPad, you wanna make sure that your views or your app dynamically sizes to fit the screen size of whatever screen the user's using correctly. It could be a small iPhone versus a big iPhone. It could be an iPad versus an iPhone, whatever it may be. And container relative frame is gonna help us write cleaner code to accomplish that dynamic sizing effect. So now let's go ahead and hop into the code and dive into some examples to so we can see how we can use this awesome feature, guys. So I have Xcode opened up here, guys, with a base Swift UI view. Let's go ahead and wrap our text component up in a VStack to get this started. So I'm just gonna say embed in VStack. Now, guys, what I want us to do is start messing around with some frames. Like, how would you fill out the, make this VStack fill out the entire width and height of the screen? We have a couple ways of accomplishing that in Swift UI. Let's go ahead and start this out by giving this a background of dot blue. And we're gonna see that our frame is limited to the bounds of this text, right? So let's imagine I wanted to fill out the entire height of my screen. Well, one way to do that within VStacks is to use spacers, right? So we could say spacer, spacer, to keep it centered. And that fills out the entire height of my screen, but the width is still constrained to the width of this text component, right? So one way we can fill out the entire width of the screen is by either wrapping this in an H stack as well and using spacers, but there is a much cleaner implementation, which is to give it a frame of a max width of dot infinity. And we could also say max height dot infinity, and that would allow us to remove these two spacers. So you guys might be familiar with this stuff, right? So this is a great way to accomplish that. But what if I wanted to make my VStack half the height of my screen? Well, we do have an, a way of accomplishing that as well. Let's go ahead and create a property up at the top here called screen height, and it's gonna be a CG float. And we could set it equal to UI screen dot main. And you guys will see that this is getting deprecated soon. So we definitely don't wanna keep using this. And this is where container relative frame is gonna help us out. But let's go ahead and just add this implementation really quickly. We could then say dot bounds dot height, right? And I could say, okay, let's keep the max width of infinity, but let's give this a frame of a height of my screen height divided by two, right? So that's gonna give me my screen height divided by two. I could adjust that to divided by three, divided by four. And this does give me some capability of dynamically sizing this view relative to my screen height. So this could be a smaller iPhone, a bigger iPhone, and it will always just look at the screen height and divide it by four or whatever, right? So that's another okay implementation. You could also use geometry readers to help you do this, guys. But container relative frame is going to be the future of how we can accomplish this dynamic sizing. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can utilize that in order to accomplish this same effect in a much cleaner and more concise way. So I'm going to comment out these two lines of code and here's where this is gonna get fun. We're gonna say dot container relative frame. So guys, you're gonna notice we have a couple different initialization options. Let's go ahead and use this axis one first and we're going to be able to pass it an array of axes and we can say dot horizontal and dot vertical. And you guys will notice it's going to accomplish that fill screen effect for us automatically in a much cleaner and more concise way. And before we continue with some of the more advanced ways to use container relative frame, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation. This is something you should always do when working with a new feature. You can just hold down the option key and click on that modifier. And you guys will see this is the documentation from Apple. It positions this view within an invisible frame with a size relative to the nearest container. So what do we define as a container, guys? Well, we have this bulleted list down here. It can either be the window presenting a view on iPad OS or Mac OS or the screen of a device on iOS, right? So it basically just represents the screen size of whatever device you're on 
or it could represent a column of a navigation split view, a navigation stack, a tab of a tab view, or a scrollable view like a scroll view or list. So these are the containers this is going to allow us to adjust our view sizes to be relative to. So this is really, really cool, guys. Let's go ahead and keep going with some more examples of how we can utilize this awesome feature. So let's imagine we wanted to make this view be half of our screen height. We can use container relative frame to help us do that. So really quickly, let's just comment out this line of code. And we're gonna go back here and say dot container relative frame yet again. And we are going to use this option here, guys the one with axis and length. And you'll see this positions, this, you know, it's the same thing pretty much, but let's see how we can use this length guy right here. So on the axis, we're gonna make it vertical only, right? Because we only care about the height in this instance, and we are going to hit enter on this closure, and we're gonna get access to the height, or we could call it length, doesn't matter, and our axis, which in this case we don't need. And we're just gonna say return length, divided by two. And you guys will see that this automatically gives us a view that is half the size of our screen. We could go divided by three, divided by 1.5, you know, anything that you want. This is how you can size your view relative to the containers frame. In this case, it's only on the vertical edges, guys. We could also make this a array and say horizontal and dot vertical and we could remove that dot really quickly. And now we can bring the axis in here. And now guys, I could say, if axis equals dot horizontal and else, right? So this is going to be how we can size the width of our view. So I could say return length. And now I could say return length divided by two for the height. So we can see just how powerful this is in terms of allowing us to dynamically size our views relative to its container, guys. And what I mean by container in this case is just the screen size of my iPhone. So I could play around with this even more. I could say, hey, do the length divided by three when the axis is horizontal, and it will give me a width that is one third the size of my screen, right? So the possibilities are really just endless here. And this is super, super clean and it's uh, really easy to use here as well, guys. And this is available now in iOS 17 only. It is important to note that if you wanna mess with both horizontal and vertical axes, you need to pass both of them in up here. So now let's dive into some other awesome uses of this modifier, guys. So let's um, really quickly, let's just go ahead and move all of this in onto the text component itself. So we're gonna give this text component within this VStack, this container relative frame. I want us to go now and actually create a scroll view, like a horizontal scroll view below this. So really quickly, let's go ahead and just say for each, or we're gonna say actually scroll view, and we're gonna make it horizontal. And then we're gonna say for each, and we'll say like zero up to, but less than 10, index in, and let's go ahead and create a rectangle. So guys, uh, go ahead and wrap that for each up in an H stack actually, and this will give us this effect here. So guys, let's imagine that we wanted to show maybe three rectangles and span them across the, the width of the screen, right? So we can actually use container relative frame to help us accomplish this. So I can go on this rectangle and say dot, let's give it, let's start out by giving them a height really quickly. Let's say like they're 200 or 100 pixels, right? So now, Right now I have 10 of these rectangles, but I only want three to fill the width of my screen. So I could use container relative frame and select this option down here, the one with axis, count, and spacing. So let's go ahead and select this guys. We are going to say we want the axis to be horizontal and you could literally just use the default values they give you four and spacing is 10. And we can take a look at what this gives us back, right? So now it's gonna say, hey, we want this to be relative to the horizontal axis and only display four rectangles at a time. So fit four rectangles into this frame and give each of them a spacing of 10 pixels. If I change this to three, it will adjust the frame of all of my rectangles so that it's only fitting three on the screen. And I can do so with two, six, whatever, right? So this 
You can see just how powerful this is, guys, when working with scroll views here as well. And you can also adjust the spacing. So I could say I want a spacing of two pixels and it will adjust all of that accordingly, right? I could say 16 pixels. And if you guys wanted a peek of that next rectangle to indicate to the user that, hey, there's more items in this list, you could do that as well. And let's see what happens if we do three here. Like this guy's is just so much cleaner than what we had to do before to accomplish the same effect. And it makes dynamically sizing your views relative to the parent container so much easier. And that is going to wrap it up for container relative frame, guys. You can start using this in your apps to dynamically size your views. And if you wanna continue learning iOS app development with us, you can check out the website at stephancodes.com. The link is in the description. We offer a bunch of amazing professional courses, guys. And that includes everything from app clones and building things like Instagram, Airbnb, and TikTok to the fundamentals of Swift. You guys can see here, we have a whole section for that if you wanna dive deeper into that. We just launched this Mastering Swift Concurrency course. We have Intermediate and Advanced Fundamentals, Programming Fundamentals for Complete Beginners, Swift UI Bootcamp for Complete Beginners. This video that you just watched is going to be a part of a future course, which is Intermediate and Advanced Swift UI. And guys, we also have amazing app templates. And if you guys can become a member on the website, and right now we have a 20% discount on all memberships, you guys get unlimited access to the site. So you get access to all our pro courses and all of our app templates as well. These are ready to go source code that uh, templates that come ready to go out of the box guys. So if you just want source code to dive into and get started with developing that app, you've always wanted to, these source codes help give you a great starting point. And like I said, if you guys want full tutorials on how to build those things, that's what the pro, uh, pro courses are for. And once again, guys, for less than a coffee a day, you can sign up to become a member to get full access to all of that stuff. So hope to see you become a member here with us at App Stuff. If not, you guys can just stick around and keep watching stuff for free on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you in the next one, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.